overcome this? How, how do we deal with, with what we're thinking about? How do we deal with what we're thinking about? How do we deal with why do we think about what we're thinking about? How do we, how does what we think about make us feel? And how will that determine the course of our lives? You know, um, um, now it says in Psalm, Psalm uh, chapter 73, verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail. <laughs> yeah, they may fail. But, but Yah is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. This is what this is this is what you this is really what you need to tell yourself. This is what you really have to understand. My flesh and my heart may fail. Yeah, yeah, it may fail. It may fail you. But but you but see when that happens, right? When 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 your when your heart fails you, you have to know. You automatically have to know that Yah is the strength of your heart and he is your portion forever. He is your, he's the strength of your heart. Why is he the strength? Why is Yah the strength of your heart? Why? Because he made your heart. He made your heart. He already, he already formulated your heart. He already constructed your heart. He knows what your heart is made of, right? Now, now when, when, when he constructed your heart, that was, that's part of his spirit, right? Your, he made your flesh. I mean, he made you from the dust of, he formed you from the dust of the ground. Now, just because Adam did what he did, that, that, I mean, yeah, that, that, you know, that may have, that, now that has caused, that, that, that has caused some dissension in the world. It has caused conflict in the, in the, in the spiritual realm, you know, but, but that has already been dealt with now. You see the, you know, um. The flesh uh, uh, is going to die out. You know, the flesh is going to die out. Now, your heart now is, you know, may fail, but, but you know, your heart doesn't have to stay in, in the mode of failure. It doesn't have to stay there because you can deal with your heart. You can deal with that. You can deal with that. You know, but if you can deal with that just by knowing that Yah is your strength. How, and, and, and to find that strength in him, get into the word and see what he says. And that is how you will find your strength. Why? Because reading the word, reading the word, it nourishes and it, it, it enriches your spirit. So now the holy, now you producing, now you are producing now the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit are now starting to bloom because you have relied on Yah as your strength. If he's your strength, then he will cause all of the right fruit to grow in your life. Where your heart was failing, now you now your heart is on the way to recovery. Now your heart has recovered from failure because Yah is your strength. And with his strength, he can produce where there's a drought. He can produce uh, uh he can produce a heart full of joy where there was a heart full of full of hopelessness he can produce now a heart full of love where there was a heart full of malice he can produce now in his strength a heart now that is just so vivacious so vibrant now where your heart was dead you had a heart issue and now you have no issue of the of the heart because of the strength because of Yah's strength because of God's strength now your heart now your heart can can prosper. Now your heart can be full of joy. Now your heart can be hopeful. Now your heart can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, full of full of gladness and full of peace, full of unspeakable peace. Why? Because I mean, you know, your your flesh, what your flesh may fail. We know that's gonna die off, and, and your heart fail. But he said he will be your strength. He will be your strength. He'll be your strength. He'll be your strength. He'll be the strength of your heart and your portion. And your portion forever. And your portion. But now we can go to Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 13. And it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Mm. You will seek me and find me with all your heart. Now, just 
think about everything that you put your heart into since you've been here live. Since you've been alive, you know, we you know, you've had aspirations. You know, we've all been young. We've all been teenagers. Some of us are still young. Some of we have some teenagers out here. But um, but you know, but but in a, in the grand in the larger scheme of things, to my adults, we've been children. We were teenagers. Now we are adults, full fledged adults, and we and we have sought. We've sought out. We've sought out different, you know, different goals, different accomplishments, uh, different quests of life. We, we've sought out, you know, our wants. We've sought out our needs. We've sought out the best decision we thought that we could make for us. We've sought out the best opportunities. We've sought out, you know, the, the, the friendships of, of people we've met along the way. We've sought out, you know, the kind of, the kind of you know, profession we would like to be in, the type of salary we, we desired to make. Uh, we've sought out all of these things a lot of times, most of the time, with all of our hearts. We put our heart into what we do. We put our heart and, and we put our soul into whatever profession we're in. We put our hearts into, you know, into fixing a good meal. We put our hearts into fixing up our houses. We put our hearts into our daily tasks at the job so that our bosses, you know, can, can you know, can extol us or put us on a, on, a, on a high pedestal. We put our hearts and our soul. But he says, you know, you know, after all of these things that we've sought after and, and we and, and, you know, we've sought after with all of our heart, we sought all of these things. Right. And even with all of these things that we've sought after and and put our hearts into, we still seem to, at the end of the day, have have some kind of, you know, have, have an issue with the way we think, you know, about things at times. We have a heart, we have these heart issues, but he says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we have sought after, we have sought after a plethora we have sought after, you know, so many different things at different times of our lives. And although we sought after it with all of our hearts and all of our minds, we still could not seem to find the full portion of everything that we sought after. We, we could not, and we sought after it with all of our hearts. We still, we still have yet to experience and we have still yet to obtain everything that we've sought after with all of our hearts, right? We still couldn't find it. We've sought after these jobs. We've sought after the money. We've sought after this lifestyle yet and still, yet and still, you know, we, we, we couldn't find it. We, we couldn't find exactly what we were looking for, but he makes it clear, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That means if you seek him, if you seek out the Father with all of your heart, you will find him. You will find him. You never have to worry about putting your heart into seeking him and not finding him. If you put your heart into, into seeking him, you will find him. It will not be a hit or miss type of situation. It will not be, you know, a fly by night situation. It will be not, it will not be a situation to where you would have wasted your life, you know, seeking to find something with all of your heart only to see that you did not get or you did not find everything that you sought out to get with all of your heart. No, if you seek him, if you seek him, with all of your heart, you will find him. You will find him. And then when you seek him with all of your heart and you find him, then he is in your heart. Then he can be your portion forever. Then he can strengthen your heart. Then he can strengthen your, your emotions. Then he can fix the way you think. Then he can fix the way you make your decisions. Then he can fix the way you act. He can fix your character, fix your destination if you seek him with all of your heart and find him. Now, but then, you know, in, in Psalm chapter 37, verse four, 
It says, take delight. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Of your heart. You know, but what, listen, what did he first say? People skip past that first, you know, lean not into your own understanding. No, what does he say first? Trust in the Lord with all of your what? Heart. That's the first thing. It, then it's lean not into your own understanding. First, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Go back here. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the what? Desires of your heart. So he doesn't give you the desires of your heart just because you have the desires of your heart. He says, take delight in him first. Take delight in him. See, because when you take delight in, 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 in the Lord first, then he already knows where your thoughts are. He knows uh, that you have your thoughts in the way you think lined up with his way, his word, his will. See, when you take delight in the Lord, he can give you the desires of your heart because he know first that your heart was after him. He, he can give you what you desire in your heart because he know you're thinking about him. But delight in him first, then he gives you the things of your heart because when you delight in him first, when he gives you the things uh, of that you desire in your heart, he will already know that what you desire in your heart does not take precedent over him first. See, so you have to delight yourself in him. Then he gives you the desires of your heart because now that you have him, the desires of your heart that was outside of him won't even matter if you don't have them, if you don't have them anymore. Why? Because it was him. It was him that you delighted yourself in. You delight yourself in him and then he can give you all the other stuff because he, he already knows that that you had yourself delighted in him before he blessed you with the desires of your heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, uh, see, the, re see the reason why he can't bless us with the things that we have in our hearts, he can't bless us with the desires of our hearts because you know why? The desires of our hearts are more carnal. The desires of our hearts are more where we want to be. The desires of our hearts is to fulfill our own will. The desires of our hearts is to obtain more and never give more, to get more and to give less. See, he, he, you see, he cannot, he cannot bless us with the desires of our hearts because we don't even delight in him. No, you delight in him first. Delight in him first. You know, seek first. The kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added. Delight in him. Delight. Take delight in his heart. You see, be like David, a man after God's own heart. This is the reason why, now see, David dealt with a heart issue. Oh, yes, he did. He had a heart issue at one, one point in time because he had a heart issue when he wanted Uriah's wife. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. When he wanted, when he wanted, when he wanted Uriah's wife and, and, and cause she was beautiful and he caught her at the wrong time as he, cause he was supposed to be out at war, but he caught her from the rooftop and saw her. He, he had a heart issue. He had a heart issue and he.